Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Are we on? We're good? Okay. Well, welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Sandy, and this is our first week downstairs in the Fellowship Hall in about a year, right? Uh, so we're going to be worshiping in this space for July and August, and if it's still hot in September, we'll continue to worship down here. And um, I want to say a great big thank you to Bill, our wonderful tech person back here. And Bill has set us up with live stream down here. So uh, we have, believe it or not, a little tiny camera up there. And uh, we have a very, very sensitive microphone right here besides the one that's here. So this is picking up noise in the room. So just so you know, um, just be just be mindful that <laughs> whatever you say or do can probably be picked up by this very sensitive mic. <laughs> so uh, today we have Anne, who is going to be our song leader, right? And John, who's going to be the liturgist. Um, we also have Jim back there, who is running our slides and helping uh, Bill along with, with slides. And we have Austina being our, um, our, sign, our sign language interpreter. And we have Ellie at the piano. And believe it or not, even though we don't see them in person, we have our own Dr. Jadrian Tarver on video. So we, even though we're missing him, he is away at, uh, I'll call it summer camp, but it's uh, uh, Tanglewood. Tanglewood, yes. Uh, a very prestigious uh, music uh, summer session for folks. So we're excited for him for that. So, uh, a couple of announcements. Um, I want to let you know that there is a newsletter that is coming out this week, and uh, it will have all kinds of good information about uh, what we have coming up. We have a couple movie nights. We have a missionary, Catherine Parker, who's coming for a, what I call a brown bag lunch discussion, and um, a couple of other things that I think will be of interest to you. So let us start this morning um, with our video with Dr. Jaren Tarver and Ellie, who have recorded this in a, an amazing studio at Gonzaga. Producing that for us. Bill. And Bill. Bill was the tech person behind it all. Thank you. Um, all right, let us start with our call to worship this morning. The words will be on the screen. We gather this morning grateful to worship God freely. May God bless all those who worship today. 
we draw near to the God who rules over all nations. May God continue to bless our country and all the countries in the world. We seek to live in harmony and peace together with all disciples on the earth. May God continue to establish peace on earth and help us understand that it begins in our hearts. Come, let us worship the Lord. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, light of all nations, in Christ you make all things new. Guide our nation in the coming days through the inspiration of your spirit, that together we may work for the dignity and flourishing of all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you please join us in singing together our centering song, um, This Is My Song. And it is, the words will be on the screen. We don't have any hymnals down here. But please stand and sing with us. <laughs> Our first scripture reading this morning from Deuteronomy. Okay, first scriptural reading is Deuteronomy uh, chapter 10, verses 12 to 13 and 17 through 20. So now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Only to fear the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, 
and to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them with food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone. You shall worship. To him you hold fast and decrees that I am commanding you today for your own well-being. Holy wisdom, holy word. This is a little piece of trivia. How many of you thought that uh, this this uh, phrase about what does the Lord require of you came from Deuteronomy? We usually hear it in Micah, right? It came out of Deuteronomy first. Um, it just means the prophet Deuteronomy, the prophet Micah was repeating those words. All right. Um, this is a time when we, in our service, when we remember our um, Manitou friends and family and uh, loved ones in our prayers this week. Um, some of our folks are living with or recovering from some health issues, and we remember Ted Swanson, Mary Alice Everly, uh, Darlene Townsend. Um, we continue to keep Carol Swedberg in our prayers. And we also have some folks who are traveling. But also let me mention Joanne Taylor, who has, um, who's, who's really not feeling well and has started a new round of chemo. So um, she's especially uh, vulnerable this week. So uh, we also remember many folks who are traveling and we re welcome back several people who uh, have just come back from vacations and things. Polly is back from Peru. Um, let's see, who else? Mike and oh, Mike and, yeah, Mike and Ellen are back from traveling like way out to the country, right? <laughs> and we have a visitor today, Patricia, in our back row here from Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, so it's nice to have you here. Um, so it's just nice to have, we remember also Lynn Swedberg, who is traveling in Sweden now. So all those who are traveling, we keep them in our prayers this week. Let us be a people of prayer. Almighty God, you rule all the peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all the women and men to whom you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership in the nations of the world. Give to them the vision of truth and justice, that by their positions all nations and peoples may work together. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation. Purify our hearts to see and love the truth. Lord, we remember all of these things, as well as all of the people that we have mentioned today. We especially remember, Lord, those that have died in violence um, and, and random shootings and just uh, acts of racism across our country. God, we pray for those things to be um, erased and, and gone from our, gone from our uh, landscape, especially in this season of Fourth of July. May we have safe holidays, Lord. And now, Lord, we remember everything through the words that your son taught us, Jesus Christ, who said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. John's going to read our second scripture now. Our second scripture reading, we find ourselves in uh, Matthew. Chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me 
welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of those little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Word of God for the people of God. Let's sing together, You Alone Are Holy. The words will be on the screen. Let's stand together. What number is that? heard a scripture about welcoming this morning. I remember as a child uh, growing up in the Midwest that folks used to just drop in on one another. I never called for a play date. I just went over to my friend's house. And if, if someone came to our house, it was expected that we would treat them with a welcome and some hospitality. Times were different then. We lived with much less fear and expectation. The culture just seemed less um, hectic and less, less intense. Many households of the 50s and 60s did not have two full-time working adults. If one adult was at home, they kept the house tidy and they prepared food and perhaps they raised children. It was perhaps easier to be welcoming and hospitable when there weren't as many demands on our time and, and energy. But now, most adults are working full time from the time they finish their education all the way to retirement. And many folks are still even um, working in retirement part time. Lots of folks don't even like the job they're in, but they stay for the paycheck and the health insurance. Our lives are full of stress and fatigue Welcoming a stranger, offering hospitality, takes some effort and some energy that maybe we just don't always have the gumption for. Surely Jesus can understand that, right? Times were different in the first century. They lived sort of modestly and in community, very communally. In the 21st century, we're busy. We have a lot of social overload. And we like our privacy and our technology so that we can handle business from home. And we have to worry about germs and diseases and pandemics. With all that going on, why do we have to meet new people and welcome them? <laughs> but maybe in our isolation, we actually do need each other. Earlier this year in our Pacific Northwest United Methodist Conference, we had to welcome a new bishop. Last year, you had to welcome me. This weekend, many churches will be welcoming new pastors. 
But let's be real. Opening our minds and our doors to someone new takes a lot of mental and social and even physical zeal. We think, what if they don't fit in? What if they want to change our favorite things or introduce new ideas? What if, what if, what if? As many of you know, though, Anne, that was up here sitting, leading the songs, and I were at our Pacific Northwest United Methodist Annual Conference meeting just two weeks ago. And we felt privileged to hear and feel the energy and excitement of our new bishop as he has outlined for us um, what his plans are for moving the churches of our region forward. And he shared his vision through a retelling of the story of the Good Samaritan, which is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. In that story, Jesus is conversing with a legal expert who asks, who is my neighbor? Jesus proceeds to tell him about three men who were walking on the same road and came upon a man who was in the ditch. The man had been beaten by robbers. Two of them, one a priest and the other a Levite, both crossed the road to avoid helping the distressed man. But a third man from Samaria, from Samaria went out of his way to help. Now, Bishop Cedric invites us to think about who we are in that story. And he gives us some mental images to do this consideration. These are images of a mirror and a window. When you look at a mirror, we see our reflection and we see ourselves at a reverse angle. That means we see ourselves in relation to what is behind us, but it prevents us from looking around and ahead of ourselves. In the Good Samaritan story, the priest and the Levite were so focused on their own responsibilities and their own mission that they couldn't see or respond to what was happening around them. Their understanding of neighbor was limited by their own very narrow focus. They were mirror people carrying out only the agenda of the people that they saw in the mirror. The Samaritan was the one looking out the window. He could see around himself and he was so much less consumed with his own self image. So when he saw a need, he could respond. The priest and the Levite as mirror people were challenged in being able to divert their plan because their view on the play, their view was on the path that was familiar to them, the image that was familiar to them. They couldn't see what was in front of them. They couldn't see through that mirror. The Samaritan could see clearly the need of the person before him because his worldview was not obstructed. So the bishop asks us, are we interested in knowing our neighbors? the neighbors who are strangers to us? And if we are, then we need to move from the mirror to the window. The scripture is telling us that when we welcome the stranger, we welcome none other than Christ himself. After Jesus has talked about a love for family and neighbor, he wants us to extend it further by welcoming in the stranger. Welcome in the one whose life you hardly understand, not to change them, but simply because they too are God's very own. I think this is hard because we live in a culture of distrust and skepticism. Violence and mental illness are pervasive. We have to keep our doors locked in protection of the most vulnerable and protection of our own property. How do we find truth in this scripture in the realities of the world today? Maybe we have to understand welcoming in a new light. Maybe welcoming is about crossing barriers that allow for safe community gathering, both in person and in the spirit of being hospitable and open-minded to new conversation and new ideas. Maybe this scripture isn't so much about 
opening your home to every neighbor or even strangers or even having unlocked doors at the church like we used to. How about we think about welcoming the stranger as becoming window lookers and bridge builders in and on and with our community. Jessica Gross is a columnist for the New York Times and she has written a series of articles recently about the declining attendance in our church worship services. Has anybody read any of these? I've actually copied several of them out there if anybody wants to read them. She posted a survey about how people relate to organized religion. And she received a variety of responses. One of the most repeated comments was from folks who were among what we call the duns. Those who have previously attended church but are now just done with it. And that comment that she received most from them was that the sense of community in a congregation was what they missed the most. The community was their spiritual support system. It was a social outlet, and it was like their connection to something bigger. In fact, the idea, the, idea, the idea of community was mentioned in over 2,300 of her reader responses. They said it was like the community was like their social fabric, their moral fiber that held them together. In these folks, many of whom are literally our neighbors, if they were to come back to our church today, they would be the stranger. They would feel out of place and unconnected. And if they came into a church of people who didn't look like them, the first reaction probably would be distrust. We have created these barriers that take a lot of courage and effort to overcome for both the stranger and the church trying to be welcoming. That is why we have to try to meet people where and who they are. So what will make for safe community gathering? Opportunities that are easy to access, groups that feel non-threatening, places where people can come and feel loved without an agenda of, as, or scrutiny of, and people who are genuine in their acceptance of others. When my husband Paul and I moved to Ames, Iowa, we were invited to try the Methodist Church. So we got up one Sunday morning and we dressed up our, our little one-year-old and we entered the church. And someone pointed out the way to the sanctuary. And on our way up the stairs, our little one-year-old got sick. He threw up all over the stairs. <laughs> we were mortified. <laughs> but if my husband had not had a connection to that church with a coworker, I doubt that we would have ever gone back. <laughs> Welcoming the stranger begins with one connection. Connection happens when People find an affinity for something, a common interest or circumstance. Through connections, we build community. What we are finding, just even over the past year, is that folks will connect with us over mutual interests, like art and music, or a specific holiday celebration where their kids can play together and parents can get to know one another, like an Easter egg hunt or a Halloween party. These are ways that we reach out to our neighbors and welcome them in. This is our new welcome mat that says we are safe and we have something in common. Let's be friends. Let's build a relationship. And here's something else to observe from the scripture today. There isn't one word from Jesus about judging who is worthy of a cup of water or kindness. What he says is that when we are kind and compassionate people, welcoming people, we welcome God and the Son of God. The connection is like that cold drink of water mentioned in the scripture. In the welcoming, in the cup of refreshment, there are steps to transformation. And this is what I think that we are called to do at this time. Do I have it all figured out? Do I know where these connections with our neighbors and our strangers will lead? 
Can I guarantee you that in five years, we're gonna have another 100 people in our pews on Sunday morning? I can honestly say no to all of those because all I know is that we are in a season of change and we have to faithfully take this one step at a time. It's a bit like sailing a boat. We can't get anywhere unless we leave the harbor and put the sails up. Only then can we catch that breeze and move under the power of the Holy Spirit and God's grace. I hope that we can embrace this metaphor of mirrors and windows, building on the legacy of this church's traditions while stepping out to connect to whatever our community needs right now. May God bless us with energy and motivation and with opportunity and resources. Amen. Anne is going to lead us into in our response. Uh, bind us together. Thanks for the praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in your unbelief thing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God and power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'm ask you to put this here. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ, out of baptism and his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, and delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us the new heaven by water and the spirit. From the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks for it, and he broke this bread. He said, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you eat of this, remember me. And after the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for the sins of many, and forgiveness of all. <laughs> as often as you drink of it, remember me. And so in the mighty acts, of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. For I, your Holy Spirit, on these gifts and on those gathered around this table, this table that has been prepared in your name. Make them for be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us take a moment to eat and drink and remember. Today, we will do communion by the invitation method. Holly's going to come up and help hold the cup. Um, and we will, I will hand you a piece of bread and we will just dip it in the cup again. And this will just all come up and return to your seat as you are able. All right, come to the table. To the Lord Jesus name, His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, Father makes us one. Take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Lord, I love forgiveness here. Lord, forgiveness here. What does he do? He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is it. In the breaking of the bread, gather 
take this moment to um, thank everybody for their continued faithful giving to our church and to the ministries that um, this church extends out into the community. Thank you for uh, your financial contributions and for your time and skills and donation of all of those. Um, if you want to make your contribution today, it is, there is a plate at the back of this, uh, of this room. You can also give online um, at our website, www.manitoumc.org. And let us bless the gifts that have come in this week through our song of dedication, Lord, I place all I am in your hands. Lord, I place all I am in your hands. Take the gift of my dreams. words of benediction. Let us be on a common journey, one in which we commit ourselves to being bridge builders of acceptance and unity with one another and purveyors of peace 
among all nations. Will you join me in closing out our service this morning with the singing of this hymn of celebration, America the Beautiful. God's peace be with you. Have a happy and safe 4th of July. Amen. Amen. I'm God. Peace.